Thank you to everyone who is tuning in from across the state to learn about Girls Who Code this morning. I hope you're staying warm. I'm a little bit bundled up here where I am. Uh, my name is Hannah Simon Goldman. I am the Regional Partnership Coordinator with Girls Who Code who works with Indiana. So I am really excited to tell you all about our clubs program and uh, how you can get started. There we go. That is our agenda for the session. So I'll start by just giving a quick overview of who we are at Girls Who Code, you know, why we were founded and what we're here to do, and then I will transition and jump into what it is we're doing, right, our club's program. We have a couple of different program models for different age girls and young women, so I'll talk about those separately. Then I will tell you all about what you need to know to get your own club or club started, how we support you, and talk about what community partnership looks like at Girls Who Code. I'll finish up, I'll try to leave five or 10 minutes for some questions at the end of the webinar. So if you have questions, you can put them in the question box, the chat box that should have popped up on your screen, and I will answer them either as we go, or if there's not a good moment to answer them as we go, then I'll answer it at the end. So any questions at all that you have, feel free to put those in there. I am really excited uh, to get started, and over the next you know, 20 minutes, half hour, we're going to cover everything you need to know to get a Girls Who Code Club started. We wanted to start off by talking about the, the broader issue that we're seeing, because what we know is that computing jobs are some of the fastest growing jobs right now in the U.S., and they're also some of the highest paying jobs, right, for entry-level jobs. But what we also know is that women are being left behind. Less than 25% of these jobs are currently held by women, and if we don't do anything, that number is expected to decline if left to itself. So we thought, okay, we're gonna do something about it. So at Girls Who Code, we are trying to inspire, educate, and equip girls uh, with the skills they need to take advantage of all the opportunities that will be available to them. So the way we want to do that is with free and flexible computer science programs. Those are two of the really important sort of descriptors there of our programs, and I'm gonna tell you about how those programs work. We have our after-school clubs, which are our largest program that we run here at Girls Who Code. The first thing to know is they are free. We put that in capital letters. We're gonna put that a few more times throughout the presentation because we wanna make sure that you believe us, that it is really entirely free, everything related to clubs, the materials, the training, the ongoing support, the curriculum, um, you will not pay for anything. We don't want your credit card, right? Uh, we, we want you to know that up front. Uh, so the, the other big thing to know, our clubs are led by facilitators. So those can be librarians on staff. They can also be local teachers, parents, really an adult volunteer from any part of the community. Lots of our facilitators are beginners at computer science. They don't have a background in it, but they come to it, they're really excited to share this opportunity with the girls and to learn alongside the girls. I actually think it's a great opportunity because the facilitators can model, you know, it's okay to try new things and take risks. And, you know, I might make some mistakes. You guys can help me, we can learn together. And so I think that's a really great role model for the girls to have as a facilitator who might not have as much experience in computer science as well. So like I mentioned, there are two different program models a third through fifth grade model, and a sixth through twelfth grade model. So I'll talk a little bit about each of those. Um, and as I said, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box and I'll get to them as we go or at the end of the webinar. We'll start off with the older clubs. So our sixth through twelfth grade clubs, still free. Uh, <laughs> things we want you to know about these clubs. So they allow girls to engage with computer science and impact their community in a positive way through code, basically. Um, they are gonna be engaging with online tutorials and activity sets to learn about code. They're gonna be building community with each other through interactive activities. Um, there's, there's a lot of things going on in clubs that I'm gonna jump into on the next slide, but just logistics wise, what we want you to know is that most clubs for this age level meet for one to two hours after school. So maybe once a week for an hour or two, maybe twice a week. Uh, and most of them meet for 10 to 15 plus meetings. We have 10, uh, sorry, we have customizable less 
that I'll talk about more later, which are set up for that sort of timeline. But, you know, like I said, we want to be flexible. You know your community better than we do. So if you think it would work better to do a, a different number of clubs, a different amount of time, you know, a few times a week for a shorter amount of time, you're welcome to take the curriculum and run with it in the way that works best for your for your students and for your community. So to jump in here for the uh, 6th through 12th grade, these are the three main focuses of the club. So the first piece is sisterhood, right? That's really important. We want to show girls that computer science is somewhere where they can feel comfortable and confident, right? So it's somewhere where they have peers, their friends are doing it, it's a fun thing to do, it's a cool thing to do, and they'll also have models. So part of every club is an in-text spot. These are well, and they're provided on our online platform for the facilitators. But there are examples of women historically and in the present day in all different fields who are using where they want to go. So there's examples of women in what we might think of as programming jobs, right? The woman who led the team to make the mark over, great story. But also women in art and health and education and government across the board using coding to open doors for them. So those are a really important part as well. We also have an alumni network for the girls because we want to show them that even if they, you know, they decided they join a computer science class at their middle school or high school, they might be the only girl in the room. That happens a lot. But they'll know that they have this whole of tens of thousands of girls who code across the country who's there to support them to, to be their community for them. Really big piece to that sisterhood piece. Of course, the hard skills are also very important to us, right? Girls will be working through web-based tutorials and activity sets to learn coding. They'll be working with different programming languages. If they are beginners, don't have a lot of experience, start off with some basic sort of block-based code using Scratch, and they can also go up maybe by the end of uh, their club run or maybe a few years building a database, they're building an app, they're programming a robot, right? all sorts of opportunities there. So they can come back year after year, as it says there, to, to grow their skills, which is great. They'll also be learning some really important skills for any 21st century job, so they'll be practicing collaboration and problem solving, logic-based thinking, computational thinking. So no matter what we go into, these are going to be useful skills for them. The final piece of our clubs is impact. This is a really important piece because we don't just want to come to the, these young women and say, hey, adults think you should learn how to code now, right? What we want to say instead is, hey, it's really cool that you're passionate about X, Y, Z. Here's how coding can be a really powerful problem solving tool to address that, right? So as they're learning how to build a website, a game, an app, an animation, they will have gotten together to brainstorm what they want their Girls Who Code project to be. And so they'll be building that throughout the run of the club. So the last club is a celebration where they present out to family and friends and community this thing that they've built together that really feels important to them and that they can be really proud of. So I have some examples of those projects. Um, they can, you know, whatever the girls are passionate about, whatever they care about, whatever they're into, can their project out. These are just two examples. So Waterwell was created by some girls who are really passionate about water conservation and the environment. So they created a website where you can track your water usage, and then it gives you tips and tricks to use your water usage if maybe it's not uh, in a great place or maybe it's not where you thought it was. Right. Uh, the next one pillar was created by some young women who are really passionate about mental health. They wanted to destigmatize conversations around mental health, so they proposed an app for teenagers and young adults to have this supportive community to get personalized advice from real people and we start the conversation there. So those are two. Examples. We've had a few things all across the board. We had some middle schoolers who created a website that daily school lunch schedule and helps folks make healthy eating choices. They included a game that they made where you have to use your tray to catch the milk, the cookies and the junk food, that sort of thing. So it's really only bound by their message and what it is they choose to do for the project. Um, there is a project gallery on our website. 
www.thepinkquote.com so you can check out lots of examples that girls have put up. They're really proud to share with you. There's a project gallery at the bottom of this slide. I will be sending out these slides after the presentation so you will have access to that and you can always just go to girlsucode.com as well. So that's sort of sixth through twelfth grade clubs in a nutshell. Now I am going to talk about third through fifth grade. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the box there. Our third through fifth grade clubs have a lot of similarities with our older clubs, a lot of the same sort of core values, but they're a little bit different. Um, they are still free. We wanted to make sure you knew, still free. Uh, the first big difference is that while our 6th through 12th grade clubs use online browser-based curriculum, our 6th through 12th grade clubs use our nonfiction book, Learn to Code and Change the World. So there's that book there on the left. Uh, we do provide that for free, so we send a starter to all clubs, and then based on student enrollment, we send more books so that every girl will have a book to work with. That's important. So that is where the curriculum comes from for these clubs. Logistics-wise, they might meet for a shorter amount of time. Um, so when we work in schools, you know, we see a lot of schools who might do it during a lunch, during an enrichment block. Um, we have folks who come into schools, you know, from outside organizations, those time periods to host the clubs as well. And they might meet for a shorter number of clubs, maybe five to ten meetings per school year. So again, we want to be flexible, and the curriculum really is very flexible for you to make it fit with what works for the kids in your area. Let's jump into a little more about their three fifth grade clubs. Like I mentioned, the books are where the curriculum comes from. So this is really great. So they the, the clubs sort of start off like a, you know, like a book group, like a discussion group. So we have some discussion questions. So the girls will read from part of the chapter. It will have the computer science, the hard skills. It will have the women in tech spotlights that the older clubs are using as well. Uh, and so they'll talk about those things. They'll engage with the book. Then the next part of the club is a creative challenge, a Girl Who Code challenge. So we have online options with some basic, you know, intro to computer science challenges on the computer, but you can also do it entirely offline. So you can do it sort of real world uh, examples of activities. So if you, you know, maybe don't have as many computers available at your branch, if the Wi-Fi is a little spotty, if you can't reserve the computers every week at a certain time, you can do the third through fifth grade clubs entirely offline, which can be really useful. The next piece with our third through fifth grade clubs um, are those, those soft skills, we call soft skills, right? So we want to teach girls, yeah, you know, it's great that you're interested in this. And it might be kind of challenging. It might be hard. But that's okay, right? It's okay to to work with challenges and to make mistakes and to mess up and you know we're not going to laugh at you when you mess up we're going to help support you we're going to help you figure it out we're going to do it together um, so those pieces again no matter what they end up going into are going to help serve them really well um, and then of course you know the computer science we want the girl to see computer science as a part of their life earlier than they might have otherwise had access we want them to see that you know it's it's something that they can use as a really powerful tool, just like in the sixth through twelfth grade clubs. So that's sort of third through fifth grade in a nutshell. Again, any questions, put them in the chat box over there, and I'll get to them now or at the end of the webinar. I want to talk about the reach and impact of our clubs right now. So we have reached over 90,000 girls to date with our clubs. So we're in all 50 states. We're expanding internationally this year, which is really exciting. What we have now, now that we've been around for a few years, is some students who have aged out, right? They've graduated high school and they're college age now. So of our college age alumni, we have some data back, which is great. They're majoring in computer science or related fields at a rate 15 times the national average, which is amazing. And we're so excited and so proud for them. And then when we look at our Black and Latinx, um, students and our students from low-income households, right, they're majoring in computer science at a rate 16 times the national average. So they really are finding their place in computer science and being encouraged to continue on with it as they figure out what comes next, which is really great and we're really excited to hear. So hopefully this is inspiring you to maybe want to get a club started or to think about what a club might look like at your library. So we do try to make it as easy as one, two, three. 
right? So we are providing most of the things you need, but you need these three things uh, to get a club started. You need space in a nonprofit, so that could be your library, or like I said, you know, we have, I have a library I work with who's right across the street from an elementary school, so they pop over, um, like I said, you know, during that, during that enrichment period, and they, the librarians host the club there, which is great. So any space in a nonprofit to host the club is pretty easy to do for most folks. The next thing you need, if you are running a third through fifth grade club, you need our nonfiction book. Like I said, we're going to send those to you at no charge. So good job. You did it. You're ready to go there. If you're running a sixth through twelfth grade club, you do need computers and internet connection for the girls. Um, so again, if that's going to be an issue at your branch, you can try to find a space at somewhere else nearby who might be interested in helping you out uh, and getting those computers for the girls to use so they can work collaboratively but also individually on their projects. That last piece and very important piece is a facilitator for the club. We want to remind you that you do not have to have computer science experience to become a facilitator. Some of our best facilitators are learning right alongside the girls, which is great. We know that that might seem a little daunting if you, right, you don't have a background. How can I really, you know, lead the club? How can I help the girls get where they need to go? We hear you, and we have spent a lot of time compiling a lot of great resources and supports for facilitators. So this is a laid out list of some of them. Um, so first of all, all of our facilitators go through an online webinar training. So that is set up to get you ready for day one and to introduce you to our online platform, which we call girl to code HQ. So HQ is sort of the gold mine of resources for facilitators. I'm going to show you an example um, of HQ on the next slide, but we want, we want you to get familiar with it and we want you to get comfortable so we have that training to help you get ready for launch day. We also have the club success specialist. So that's a girl to code staffer and a week or two before your club is set to start, they're going to reach out to you and say, hey, you know, I'm your club success specialist. If you have any questions about HQ, about the curriculum, about something that happened in club, you know, reach out, let me know. You can send them an email, schedule a phone call, schedule a video chat, and they are available all throughout the run of your club to help support you and make sure you have everything you need to get going and, and to have a good club. We also have an online forum for facilitators, right? So the girls have, you know, a, con a connected network across the country and so do the facilitators. So you can ask questions, you can, you know, get grouped together based on geographic location or age level or what sort of projects the girls are going to be doing. So that can be really useful as well for you to have other facilitators to bounce ideas off of. And then we also do have in-person and virtual events hosted by Girls Who Code, which I'll talk a little more about later, but those are great chances to meet with the broader Girls Who Code community. We also have on HQ recruitment toolkits. We want to help, you know, enroll students, or maybe you want to start a club, but you need to find a facilitator, right? You want to host the club at your branch, but you need to find a facilitator to do it so we can help you recruit them as well. We want to make sure that, you know, yeah, that folks show up. That's really important. We also have the club fund. So our clubs are free still, right? but we also know that you might need snacks or want to do a field trip or bring in a speaker or get some robots, right? There might be supplemental things that you want or need for your club. So every club that enrolls three or more students, right, basically you can tell that, you know, you're up and running. Um, you gain access automatically to $300 of funding that you can use then for any of those things that I mentioned. We have a couple of easy ways for you to access that, which I can talk in detail about if you have questions, um, but we do make it really straightforward. And again, every club that's up and running and enrolling students automatically gets access to that fund. So that's important to know. So I wanna show you an example now of that HQ of the online platform that I mentioned. So this is where the facilitators are going to get everything they need to get started. So the first thing, I've mentioned the customizable lesson plans, right? So for each meeting that you have, we have, okay, great. So week one, you know, lesson one. Um, we recommend if you have 45 minutes, here's how you might set up the time. If you have an hour, if you have an hour and a half, um, you know, this many minutes for an intro activity, we suggest this one for week one. Then you might do this Women in Tech Spotlight then talk about this concept, then do this activity. So we have it all laid out, but then you can customize it, you can edit it to make it work uh, for your schedule, for your girls, 
meet their interests, that sort of thing. The Women in Tech Spotlight, I love them. Um, really diverse range of women from a diverse range of fields. Um, just really great examples to show the girls and to have them see that they are what you know a computer scientist looks like, right? That if they can see it, they can be it. Um, there's also information for the tutorials and activity sets, right? Figuring out how to get started, where to maybe stick the girls in if they're at different levels of knowledge and understanding at this point. We have, you know, icebreaker activities, activities that help the girls get to know each other and build community while also starting to practice those important skills like collaboration and problem solving and that sort of thing. We have a guide to help the facilitator guide the girls through the process of figuring out what their club project is going to be if they're a 6th through 12th grade club. And then we also have access to get the club fund grants on HQ as well. So those are some of the things that we have. As you can see on the left, there's a lot more tabs as well. There's a ton available. You can actually go on and get a sneak peek of HQ if you want to. So you go to Girls Who Code HQ, and again, these slides will be sent to you, so you'll have the link here. You click sign up, and then you create login information. It is not starting a club, it is not you know, your firstborn child being handed over or anything like that. It's just a way for us to keep track of how many folks are using our resources and where folks are using our resources. So you create login information, and then you can see examples of the curriculum. You can poke around and see what resources are available. So that can be really helpful. Yeah, that can just be a good way to just get a, more, you know, a better sense of what a club might look like and how you might do that. Um, so we hope that after that, uh, you will want to launch a club, right? Um, so before I jump into that, I wanted to tell you about community partnerships because that can be an important part of launching your club. So we work with community partners who are nonprofit organizations, like I said, across the country. So partners are basically broader organizations who might want to launch more than one club. So we work with libraries who have a lot of branches, we work with regional library systems. We also work with folks like school districts, departments of education, all sorts of things. So I put down there the logos of some of the folks sort of nearby who we're working with. Um, I have the Indiana Department of Education has a great partnership. We've reached a lot of schools this year that way. Um, and then in Ohio, we work with three out of the four regional library systems. So I put a couple of those on there. In Kentucky, we're working with the Department for Libraries and Archives as well as the Department of Education. So those are just some of the examples of partnerships. Um, and I'm going to send you out some more information. So if you have questions about becoming a partner, we would love to answer them. There are benefits to being a partner with Girls Who Code. Basically, as I said, being a partner just means you affirm to us, yep, we want to launch more than one club. That's the whole thing of being a partner, right? So you get a Girls Who Code staffer who helps support the partnership. You get one club success specialist who works with all the clubs, gets to know the partnership really well. You also get access to a separate source of grant funding. And you get priority access to engagement opportunities. So if we have a field trip or a speaker coming to the area, we would let you and your club know first so that you can get registered for that. Um, so if you have any questions about that, again, stick it in the chat box and I would be happy to answer that for you. So back to launching your own club. We would love for you to get a club started. There is still plenty of time to launch it for this year. We support clubs through the academic school year. So through, you know, if you have basically enough time to get started through March um, in order to still fit in all those clubs that you would want to before the students are let out for the summer. We do not support clubs over the summer right now, unfortunately, but we'll let you know. We know that libraries always ask about that, definitely. Um, but if you are ready, you go to girlswhocode.com slash club supply. You'll have the link for this sent to you. It's a really quick application. We just want to, you know, make sure you check the boxes that, yep, you're hosted in a nonprofit. Um, you know, you have permission to be there. You're working with girls who are the right age. And then we get to approve you, and it's a really exciting time when you get to get your club started. The turnaround is pretty quick to get a club started. Um, so we hope that you do. And yeah, if you have questions about that, now is the time to ask them. We have about five minutes left for questions here on the webinar. And then if you have questions that I do not have time to answer, uh, I will, like I said, be sending out an email with a recording of the webinar, with the slides, with some resources. So you'll have 
you know, my email address, you can email me anytime. My information is there below. Um, and I would love to talk with you about forming a partnership, about starting a club, about anything you might have a question about. So we'll hang out for a minute and give folks a chance to answer or to ask questions that I will answer. Um, there is sometimes a little bit of a delay between when you hit enter on your question and when it pops up on my end. So if you know if you do ask a question that I don't get to, like I said, I'll be able to see it and I'll respond individually in an email. All right. So someone asks, how do we get our girls interested? Right. Um, so would you know would love to to get girls excited and get them interested in the program. That's a really good question because right recruiting the girls is is an important piece as well. Um, one so the first thing is our recruitment toolkit. So we have flyers that you can put up that you can send to you know the local schools. You can hang up in the library. We also have uh, template emails if maybe you want to send out an email blast social media blurbs that you can use. We have a lot of really neat videos that have been done about our program. So that can be a good way to reach girls, maybe on social media to post a video about the club. Um, you know, we have, we have some really neat videos. Um, like, you know, when Hidden Figures came out, Octavia Spencer, the actress, made a little video about Girls Who Code and, you know, talking about hidden figures and the ways in which women in tech have always been around. So there's really good resources in the recruitment toolkit, first of all. We've had some folks who have done sort of like an intro session for the clubs that they want to be launching. So they invite girls to come in and sort of get a sense of what a club might look like, you know, have some activities out, do some of the um, community building activities, introduce them to the books, introduce them to some of the activities to sort of, you know, show them what a club might look like so they or their parents, you know, can commit to joining the club. But good question. And that is one of the things that we really do want to help support you with is getting the girls interested. We have another question here. Uh, is transportation an issue for getting students to the library from the schools? Yeah, good question. So that, you know, that's a that happens on a sort of individual basis that sometimes it can be. Um, we have some folks who are near enough that students are walking. We have some school districts who actually are able to, you know, to bus kids in and out. Um, but if it, you know, if it is going to be an issue getting them to and from, um, that's something that we can help you brainstorm, but is, you know, it varies a lot based on the individual situation. But good question. And right, we do want to make sure that kids can, can get there and can get home safely. Absolutely. Someone has a question here about how many clubs you need to get your clubs or how many girls you need in your club to get started. Good question. We don't have any limits. Um, like I said, you become eligible for the $300 grant once you enroll three or more students. So, you know, once hopefully you have a good number. Um, our average club size is about 10, I think. That tends to be a nice group because they can work individually, they can work collaboratively in different size groups, but there's no, there's no, limits as there's no minimum limit you know if you have more than 20 or so girls in the club we suggest adding on another facilitator dividing the club into two separate clubs that sort of thing you also get two separate grants if you divide into two clubs so there's that another question that comes up a lot with libraries is can boys join the club right because i know a lot of libraries uh have issues around gender specific programming which comes from a good place right um, but in this case, you know, what we say is that we are here to encourage girls to feel comfortable in a space where they have typically not felt comfortable because of, because there's not gender parity. Um, so the clubs are going to be about, about empowering girls. But if a boy shows up, we're not going to kick them out. We're not going to be going through HQ trying to see who looks like they might be a boy, right? So if boys show up, if folks of all genders show up, that's okay. That's not a problem for us. Okay, it is 10.30, so I want to respect everyone's time here. Um, so I will officially end the webinar. Um, thank you again so much to everyone for coming out. I am really excited to get this program in more libraries in Indiana, uh, and I can't wait to work with you more and help you get this going.